Yes, Lord. Well, praise God, praise God. I apologize. I didn't see y'all looking at me. My God, did you get some coffee this morning? It's early this morning. It's about 5 o'clock, I think it is. My God, what a beautiful day I had yesterday. I hope you had a beautiful day. We give prayer out to God this morning, who's the head of our life, my life. He should be the head of your life also, if you choose. Lord, I thank you this morning that I got up in my right mind this morning. And our blessings to the viewers that's watching me more this morning, hoping that your family is okay. My God, did you get something to drink this morning? Or it's really early. It's early in the morning. It's about 5 o'clock or a little after. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. Just act like y'all see me do that twice, which you did. Ooh, that's a, that's a double dip this morning. Well, good morning and blessings to you this morning. Let me tell you something. I had an awesome time yesterday with my cousin, Brother Brian. We went out there and we did some fishing yesterday. I had a glorious time. My God, and I hope whatever happened yesterday for you was a blessing. And I know there's some people that watching me and it's something they went on yesterday that wasn't that great. And it was really painful and hurt you and maybe lost someone yesterday. I don't know who's watching me. Uh, uh, I don't know, accident, anything, uh, diagnosed with cancer. Somebody was uh, lost a mother yesterday on 4th of July, lost a dad, lost a child. Come on, lost a friend, lost a co-worker. To all of you that's out there, and I know that can happen to somebody, my empathy go out to you. I really have a heart for people that go through stuff that I'm not going through because I just know it hurts been here over 60 some years uh, I just know it hurt it hurts and there's a a, a plan a plot uh, an, an escape plan that God have for you if you believe that but today we're going to talk about something that we don't preach about a lot because it's talking about us as pastors listen pastors can't be no hoes like we used to be pastor can't be getting that money like we used to be, especially when you're trying to get money from the church for your gain. Pastors can't be dating other women in the church and have a wife. Pastors shouldn't be dating any women in the church if he's a single parent, a single pastor, or a widower being a pastor. You have to be careful about dating the women in the church. Um, it talks about that pastors probably need to keep that secret and tell him in the the sister agreed to take this to another level um, in marriage and then introduce her to the church. Um, it's just uh, so much pastors have to do. Um, I wouldn't put this job on nobody if you are if you can't be right because it's a job that everybody is paying attention to you um, and waiting for you to make mistakes so it's like you're walking on eggshells. Um, Sometimes people forget that pastors is men, um, and pastors should know how to separate, especially if you're married. I lost my wife seven years ago, but the pastors that is married have to know, and it just worked for me. It may not work for you. I had to let my wife, and we talked about there's a time when you're my wife, I'm your husband, and it's a time that I'm your pastor, and you are my member. And you got to be able to separate them because you can't cross-contaminate that uh, into the uh, building, into the house, into the basement, wherever you're preaching the word. You and your wife have to be on the same page. She is your helpmate, but she is also your member. Um, let me give you an example. If me and my wife is at a church meeting, and I said, honey, do me a favor and give me a glass of water. Get it yourself. You see how that sound? You know, uh, what she should say is, okay, pastor, I'm getting it right now. Um, and vice versa, if she would ask me, honey, do me a favor, give me a glass of water. I said, okay, sweetie, I got it. You see the, you see the difference? You know, so you have to be able to determine where you are. If we at home and we talking about church stuff, you still have to... Uh, Understand that the husband is the overseer of that church and you don't have the power to overthrow him 
And you have to be careful how you talk to him even when you guys are at home. The still respect have to come from both. Uh, honey, we're going to talk about something. When I say anything about the church, my wife knew at that time that she goes into the member mode. Or, or you know, she was evangelist. She did everything, choir director. She did everything in the church just as much as I did or more because um, she had to work with the sisters. But this text, just I just want to give it all to you because it's not no easy job being no pastor if you're trying to be a good pastor. I mean, nobody can be Jesus Christ. God know that. We men, we cuss, we, we have messed up since we've been pastors. We tell the truth. Then the, that truth will help people be free because we all have stomach ache. We all have diarrhea. We all have colds. We all have the flu. We lose loved ones. We lose husband. We lose wife. They don't have anything to difference to do with being a pastor because you go through all of that. Children on drugs. Children incarcerated. Children talk back to you not getting good grades, state trying to take when pastors run through that same stuff, if that make any sense. In First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, uh, the qualification of an overseer, the qualifications of an overseer. First Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, it said, he must not be a heavy drinker or be violent. He must be gentle, not quarrelsome, and not love money, and not love money. Oh, God. He must manage, here you go, he must manage his own household or his own family well, having children who respect and obey him, for if a man cannot manage his own household, Lord Jesus, how can he take care of God's church or God's people? Because he don't have to, he do have to take care of that building. But the building can take care of itself. He's got a roof to take people from getting wet. He got a heater in there to keep it warm. He got a water heater in there to keep hot and cold water. It got heat in there or air conditioned. That building can take care of itself outside of some breaking down. That's when the overseer goes with his deacons and his elders of the church, the pastor, and they see that problem coming or it's already evolved, something broke in the church. You have a meeting with the church. The church addressed the issue. If the church account is big enough to take care of that situation, you take care of it out of that account. If you don't want to drain that account out, you ask the church as a pastor or the members already know because they normally hear stuff before the pastor. And when the pastor hears that the church heater or whatever, water heater, whatever is going on in the church, and if it's a big amount of money, let's say over $1,000, then the church can do what is called a fast offering where you can help the pastor help your church uh, Contending you have hot water or whatever it is in the church, but that can come with a meeting or I have always just paid for it. I paid for it out of the church money or out of my money. See, that's sometimes if you don't have enough church money, you have to take the church money and add some of your money with it to take care of that. Then as a church, then we try to build the fund to get that money back in there so we can still use that money to help people that... A uh, single mama that just need her phone on. Just all she need is a phone. She can't make no arrangement, can't call the daycare, can't do anything without a phone. So we do that also. Uh, and that money comes out of the church. Now for my quarter million dollar house, that money should be coming from source that I've already obtained by working, uh, retired now, or whatever. Pastors that's real young, in your 40s, 50s, or whatever, or, or younger 30s, or wherever you are as a pastor, you probably need to be bringing an income in for your family and uh, paying your tithes off of your income to help the building. I'm just trying to give you real quick because this, this is going to be long. Uh, but that's, that's the way I look at it. Now, every pastor run their church different. Uh, you can't run your church like I do, and I can't run your church like you do. 
I have to run my stuff the way I run it. I don't ask my church for anything. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I don't even, I put the offering plate out there. If you want to give, you give. If you don't, that's on you. But I do know you can search it out for yourself. Jesus Christ himself talked about more money, more than faith, more than love, more than attendance at church, uh, uh, more than healing. He talked about money more through the scriptures or through the Bible than anything else. So he know we need money. He just don't want you to be the lover of money, if that make any sense. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, uh, if you got a minute, it talks about you cannot serve God and manna. In the Bible, it said manna, M-A-M-M-O-N. That's money he's talking about, possession. You can't care about that more than you care about the members. And my members at my church, we are a wealthy church. And when I sell wealth, it's not so much we got money falling out of all our pockets, but we're wealthy in the spirit. And wealthy in the spirit bring wealth in the natural. <laughs> See, when you, when you believe you're rich, you wake up in the morning and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm so rich. Comparing to somebody else. My God. I can't get no help. Ain't nobody going to even clap with me this morning. I am so wealthy because when I look at the world, when I look at them people under the bridge, when I look at them people on drugs, when I look at them people that's, that's sick in their mind, going through trouble, diagnosed with cancer, I am rich, Lord, because I'm feeling good. I have a little food in the refrigerator. I got an old hoopty car outside. Lord, I am so wealthy. And when you start operating and changing your mind to believe in you're rich. Come on. You have to believe it. You're rich in your mind. And then God, through the spirit of you being a good person, it wealth to come. God have me. I don't worry about no money no more. I gave that to God. I know I have to pay my rent. I know I have to pay my utilities. I know that he know that. And then you should be uh, grown up enough now if you've been paying any bills to know each month you have to pay bills. So you, you don't have to worry about stressing about this. When you become a full Christian, God helps your finances. See, you only could be a good Christian if your finances is good on this winning Wednesday. Is that good? Well, listen, I hope I gave you a little word today just to carry you through, especially you pastors out there. Remember, we can't not be Wolves in sheep clothing. Come on. This this ain't the club. This ain't this ain't the elves. This ain't Ote's nightclub. Come on. These are people that's hurting. And you people that come to church and figure that everybody in there is going to be holy, you are wrong. It's two left shoes. You ever tried to wear two left shoes? Wear them today. Just get two left shoes. Put, or wrong, put the wrong shoe on the, on the right foot. Put your left shoe on your right foot. And walk around all day. That's what you sound like. Sound like when you say, "Yeah, I ain't going back to that church." They rolling their eyes and looking all crazy at me. Well, they crazy too. The church is a ER. It's a it's an emergency room. That's what church is. Come on, you know we all do God and Jesus Christ like we do our charger, our phone. We don't holler out for it until we need. Ooh, girl, I got three bars on my phone. You got a charger. Girl, I need to get me. I, ooh, we got to go to the store. You got to get you a charger for that phone. You know why? Because all the power is there. See, you think your phone is something. I, I see. Especially if you got a good iPhone or them. Oh, you own that phone. Oh, you you getting your hand motion. But let that power go down. Let you look at that phone and, and see that you got three bars left. You know what you start looking for? The charger, and that's God himself, Jesus Christ, the one that charges you. Without him charging you up, there's no you. <laughs> come on, come on. Keep using your phone and don't charge it up. And then when you don't have no, no power, give me a call. If that make any sense on this winning Wednesday. Win your love back. Win your joy back. Win your boo back. You know you made a mistake. Go to them. Text them. Call them. Be best to be face to face and say, you know what? I've been stupid. I ain't nowhere in the world I need to be looking at nobody else but you, baby. 
Come on, women, tell him, your honey, you're a good husband. I got hot and bothered out there. I made a mistake. Can I win your love back? Come on, you got to talk to people in their face. This is where the problem is. Ain't nobody talking. And then we got to understand, just like I heard the one pastor saying, I've been knowing this, lust turns into love. You don't love it. Yeah, I loved her when I first saw her. You know you didn't. You lust her first saw. Come on. That's the first thing everybody, oh, girl, he cute. Oh, look at her. That's the first thing. And then you turn lust into love. By what? Relationship. Learning each other. Will you guys be blessed on this winning Wednesday? You guys be safe out there. Remember, watch with one eye open and pray. I love you all. Be blessed.